When I plug this PDP-1134 computer into the mains power, the time before last, no problems. The power supply supplied power and there was no issues until I turned it off again. But the last time I plugged it into the mains, I plugged it in, <laughs> sparks and noise and I don't know if you can see there, but there's um, molten pins. So it hadn't gone all the way in, so I was able to pull it out quickly enough and maybe it didn't make complete contact, so it didn't blow a fuse. So, so just to demonstrate that, I'll run it through this current limiter instead of plugging it straight into the mains. And that just puts these two bulbs in series with the power cord. So uh, if the, the power supply is drawing a heavy current, the bulbs will light up a lot. But with this circuit breaker up here, the power supply is not providing power to the rest of the computer. So there should be maybe a, a, a surge at, at turn on, but after that it should draw almost no current. Very, very little. But if we turn it on, nothing happens. Why? Because it's not plugged in at the back. So, turning it on with the current limiter now, full brightness. So, that power supply is effectively a short circuit that's just completing, completing the circuit so the bulbs come on full power. So, there's something wrong in there. Let's have a look inside. So the power supply is now out of the frame and before I open it up I just want to make sure that it still has that fault because now it's laying in its normal state horizontally whereas before when it was in the frame it was sitting vertically and that's the only difference between then and the time before when it didn't, didn't have a fault. So I'll just turn on the power through the current limiter again. What happened then? Oh, had on bypass wasn't current limiting. Something just blew. There's a, there's a um, circuit breaker in the in the power board. So turning on again, yep, the fault's still there. So open it up. This is the input section of the power supply, and it's uh, fairly hard to follow, but it, it boils down to just this. This circuit breaker comes straight after the input socket. Uh, I had it in my head that that circuit breaker was on the secondary side somewhere, but um, no, it's right there on the primary side. Goes for an EMI filter. Two transformers, or two windings on the primaries on the transformer are in series, and the centre tap provides a convenient takeoff point for 115 volts because these fans are 115 volts. There's a relay that powers the fans and also closes this fuse resistor arrangement, that's 10 ohms, which um, limits the surge current at turn on. So something out here will turn on the relay to close that contact and take the fuse and the, and the resistor out of circuit and turn the fans on. I guess it would have been nice if they could have got the one fan on each leg of the transformer, but uh, that would be a bit harder to do in the wiring. Now this is for 230 volts, you just change a couple of tappings on here. Uh, one and two are normally connected together in three and four for one 15 volt input, but for two thirty you join two and three. And the, the difference is that these two windings would be in parallel for one 15 volts, and the other side of the fans would go down to the neutral, so that it just sits straight across the mains. So, given that the fault appears, even with the circuit breaker off, there's not much area for there to be a problem. Basically, just somewhere in that input connector, the wiring to the circuit breaker or the circuit breaker itself. So, yeah, let's open it up. So there it is with the cover removed and I'll take off the safety shield on the terminal block. But uh, So here we can see the input IEC connector and with a bit more winter sunshine we might be able to see in the back there is the EMI filter. So that sort of means that the mains goes in here, up to the circuit breaker, back to the EMI filter, and then up to the terminal block, which seems a bit excessive. So I wonder if they just did wire that straight to the EMI filter first and then up to the circuit breaker. And fortunately this thing's packed pretty tight, so it's uh, 
hard to see, and I don't remember how it was when I opened it. I want to avoid taking this out. I think that was a bit of a pain. I'm, I'm going to replace the pan anyway, so I can take that out. And it'd be nice to get at this area here, and uh, maybe I can disconnect wires there and isolate particular wires from the connector to find out which, where the short is. I'm also suspecting that maybe in my previous adventures, with all that mains wiring, if it is running backwards and forwards everywhere, that I, when I put this back in, I may have pinched it and shorted something to earth. I'll look for that as well. So with the fan out, we can see that the mains coming from the back up to this area, there's only two wires, so it's not going from the input connector up to the circuit breaker, down to the EMI filter, and then back up here. So, dex has been telling us little porkies. The, uh, the mains doesn't go straight to the circuit breaker and then to the EMI filter. It must go to the filter first and then just two wires here going up to the breaker. Which means I'm going to have to pull this assembly out to, to see what's going on down in here. Uh, yeah, wasn't looking forward to that, but oh well, it has to come out. Yeah, so this part of the power supply came out easier than I remembered, thank God. So, yes, we can see the IC goes straight to the EMI filter and then just two wires running down there. Nothing's been pinched, as I was afraid. Uh, so, this is the suspect right now. And of course, there's a short there and on the output. Now, if we disconnect the outputs, Still a short, just to make real sure. And disconnect on this side. Yeah. And not between, not on the input. So, uh, him no good. Let's see if I can find someone who sells something like that. Or I could dig around in the catacombs, there might be something there as well, but uh, first I'll just see if there's something easily available, brand new. Now the usual scumbags wanted something like 20 bucks at least for something, for a filter like that. So I looked on eBay and uh, found these, which are um, from a a brick and mortar store, they just happened to open up on eBay as well, and only eight bucks. So, trouble is, it was a half hour drive away. So, to make it worthwhile, I've got three of them, and the bolt holes are perfect. So, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, a mob called Set Semtronics, which I've never heard of, and I've been in building our electronics in this city for many decades and I've never heard of them. All right, using something every day. So I've got a couple of spares for any other deck gear that uses filters like this that decides to burn out on me. Not burn out, but I suppose I should just check that input on these things isn't as short. Good. So I'll put this in and uh, put everything back in. I won't put the cover on until I've tested it, but I'll be back with that in a sec. I've also got new fans, so I'll replace him because I'm, I think it was on this power supply. It might have been the one on the 1104. Yeah, I wonder which one it was. It might have been the other one. Maybe I shouldn't replace it. Uh, bugger it. I'll put it in. Yeah, they only cost 18 bucks. I've got two of them, so. I'll, um, I'll replace both the power supply ones and if the logic one up on the frame here is um, plays up, I'll, I'll have two to choose from or I can buy more new ones from Element 14. Alright, this goes in, airflow that way. Okay, she's pretty much back together. Uh, current limit. And let's see that it just doesn't short circuit. Good stuff. Of course it's not doing anything yet till we get the circuit breaker here, so 
got a brief surge and then nothing. It's buzzing on the transformer. Bit of a glow out of the bulbs, but I'll do that again. See the bulbs give a flash when it first turns on. No. Our capacitors were just got to wait for the capacitors to discharge. Which might take a while. I don't think they've got bleeders. So I'll just turn on again. Yeah. And that's drawing 39 watts. Just doing nothing. Just bypass it. A bit more of a buzz. Ah, only 15 watts now. How's that? 16 watts. 39. 16 watts with nothing connected. I should put that into the dummy load. Now I got it all back together, back in the frame, just putting in the last bolt when I realised these two lugs here were on the outside of the case instead of on the inside of it. So I had to pull it all out, pull the whole insides out again. But now I've put it all back together. Uh, got my dummy load in there instead of the back plane. So Let's uh, turn it on and measure some volts. Okay, power on there. And I've got to connect the console lead there for the power switch to turn everything on. So let's try that now. Is that fan quieter? I hope so. Anyway. 4.8 volts on the 5 volt supply. It's a bit low, isn't it? Uh, minus 15. Good. Plus 15. Good. Plus 5 volts B. That's better. Yeah, this is a bit low, isn't it? And that's drawing 300 and... Oh, that's, the, no, that's about... That's a bypass. I'll put it through the... <laughs> I put it through the um, dummy load, no good. Uh, yeah, that's drawing 325 watts. All right, uh, now I'm not gonna connect the back plane yet because I've noticed this. When I pulled it all apart originally, there's a sticker that said this came from the 1134, but here it says 1104. So I'm wondering if I've managed to get everything mixed up although here it says DD11-PK which is I'm pretty sure is for the 1134 the two back planes are different because the 34 has two CPU boards and uh, there's got to be interconnections between them on the back plane the 1104 has only got the single one so it doesn't have that but I think PK is for the 1134 so I'm pretty sure this is the 34 I just saw that there, that worried me. Um, anyway, that's for another time. Uh, don't like this. Should be more volts than that, shouldn't there? Um, Alright, hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. Catch you later.